Greetings one and all, Chris Courtney here, New Pragmatics, time for the feedback loop, good to have you back. We've got, um, every, again, as usual, everybody's kind of moving in some different directions. Um, Bren is back, she's got some more CSS for us to look at. Um, she's been submitting, like, I gotta give props to Bren, she's been just really churning through the um, newpragmatic.com slash front end material, if you're looking for the exercises, newpragmatic.com slash front end. Um, there you will find HTML and CSS covered and um, a series of exercises you can go through to either level up or just begin to get your feet wet. Everything's in code pen, so you don't have to worry about installing any sort of uh, text editors or anything. This is strictly for getting practice with CSS and covering specific topics like box models and color and type and all the things that are fundamental, fundamental building blocks of CSS. Um, Eve's back and she's packaging up her digital assets for her uh, client, um, the, the first teacher project that she's been working on. And as I encourage everybody who's going through a boot camp of any sort, whether you're here with me working through New Pragmatic, which is the anti boot camp, really when you get right down to it, or you're at one of those other things where you're paying thousands of dollars, get away from the class project as fast as you can and begin doing work out in the field, pro bono work, freelance work, just get something under your belt because your portfolio is just going to be significantly stronger. That's what Eve has been doing, but I do have a tweak for what Eve, I do have a tweak for you for what you've been working on. And then Abraham's uh, come through and throw something into the mix this morning. We're going to take a quick look at that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen uh, and let's uh, go ahead and get this underway. All right, so right away I want to start here with uh, with Bren's CSS exercises. So Bren has gone through, she's working on the Top Chef pseudo class exercise. And um, as you go through, you can see she's got her hover states and active state is working fine. The only thing that I have for you, Bren, here that you could have done differently is down here you've declared nth child on both. So you've got nth child uh, odd. For, so odd would be for Padma and Gail, even would be for Tom, and really you you need one of these, but the other style that you have here, you have this border bottom. I'm just going to take even because that's Tom. I'm going to take even off, and I'm going to I'm also going to note out the others as well for a second, and I'm going to put that that border bottom right here on the cards. And as you can see, those are now applied to all of them, okay? So there's no need to really have that int child even or odd. You can, you can cho choose one, but not both. But then you you come through and you say, okay, whatever one that I, wh whichever one I need to, uh, um, to, to overwrite, I'm overwriting the style that's already there. And that's where you would come back with in child odd and that's going to overwrite the two and you see that now we have the two darker lines that have overwritten the lighter gray the other thing that you don't necessarily need is you don't need this background as it's already declared right here right here on the card okay so that's one thing i also noticed that you said you were struggling and i, I don't i don't have your exercise up here but I, I noticed that you said you were struggling with, with getting rid of the underline on, on these headlines, okay? So to do that, we, we need to look at how this is written. And right now, this is, this is just a styled anchor tag, okay? And as we know from other exercises that we've covered, think back to that navigation exercise, the, the, like the first one that you did. Um, anchor tags, until you declare um, that you don't want the underline, it's going to give you the underline. So if we wanted to, if we wanted to overwrite that, we would need to come down and find the anchor tag. And it looks like we don't have a style declared for that. Look at that. So if I came down, I'd probably add that right here. I would say, okay, a text decoration none. And that's going to get rid of the underline. Now, I also want to be able to see it, so I'm just going to change the color to FFF, just so we can see it right now. 
and that is how you would you would get rid of that color and that underline now there are some things you know we can talk about other other reasons why you would want that underline or why you might want that color but here you, you have a specific target that, that that you're trying to get to and it is trying to find where that asset is should be attached to this but let's let's just go over to newpragmatic.com slash front end and we'll go down to the type exercise and we'll get it there because you're working through this in sequential order um, so the finished image for stories this is what you're targeting okay so this is what you're targeting right now which means you've got to pull in some type uh, you've got to pull in a font to change that you've got some styling to do here but but you're this is what you're aiming for and as we look back at this if I can figure out yeah there it is as you look back at this you're you're going to need to come in here and you're probably targeting this bitter family so that's where you you're going to come through and say okay well font family bitter serif is that going to give give it to us or do we need something there what did I do oh broke that that's why my color went away yeah there it is so I had the semicolon missing but there we have bitter and then you have a fallback of serif so if bitter wasn't there this would go to some sort of serif um, and then you obviously you need to come through and set your sizes and everything else but I'll leave that to you but I, I did want to point out because I saw in your notes hey I'm having trouble with this underline that's how you get rid of the underline okay um let's come over here and look at oh by the way by the way don't tell anybody there's this cool thing called pen pot um that i've been i've been playing around with um it is like a figma alternative now i am still just between you and me it looks like figma it feels kind of like figma it's not figma and the price point on pick figma um, like Pinpot is open source, so you're not charging people for teams, um, which is really cool. I like that. Um, I don't necessarily know if it's quite there. Um, I'm gonna play around with it, um, but uh, but I just want you to know that this is out there. It's it it's kind of kind of cool to see that there's an open source design tool that's out there that is browser based, but it's. It's not like Figma's price point is crazy, and I like having the community files there. Like, uh, there's like iOS resources and things like that. So, like, there's a lot, there's a lot going for Figma that makes it really hard to jump into something like this. But I am going to be diving in deeper on Pen5. But I just wanted to mention that this is working out there, and I wanted you to know what I'm seeing. Okay. That said, let's come over here and uh, look at Eve's work. Eve is working on her. So she's got her digital assets and then she's got her style guide. And Eve, I love the fact that, you know, I can come through here and kind of see see your style guide. You've, you've dropped it into, um, you've dropped it into um, Google Drive here. The one problem that I have is that it's broken up into individual pages. And my suspicion is it's, that's what's happened because you, you're building this in Figma, and like when you export something from Figma, it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't export it packaged as a PDF. And it's like, awesome, how do I get this to actually export as a PDF? So to show you that, because I think that's that's really the only missing, missing step here, is like, I hate that these are like all in separate pages because I'm, I'm really afraid somebody... Like they're gonna hand hand these files over and it's really easy to lose a file like the way it is right now so what i would say is if we come over and yes i have the messiest desktop ever but if we I'll, I'll, i've got this thing called bundle that i made um and this is your these are your resources 
Now, you can order these however you like. I would really suggest that you have a cover page on this thing. Um, that like, first teacher, here's my logo, and you can switch the order of these things around. Um, how did I make it though, is the question. And the answer is I came in, so I, I first, first I downloaded your files, and your files were as you see them here. Like, you know, you click through each of them. But I opened them, I said, interesting paragraphs buttons PDF is it oh I I updated that okay sorry now now I see what what I did I actually I over over I overwrote the file um, but the downloaded file I'll show you I'll show you for your purposes how I, how I did that though so I'm gonna first open this up in preview All right so previews like that I'm then going to, I want to see my sidebar. Come on. Okay, there it is, sorry. I had to figure out how to get it back. And now I'm going to, I'm just gonna drag these other four in. I'm gonna drag those in, and here you can begin to reorder, you know, if I want this up top or, this one here. It's really doing a pain in the butt. Um, thumbnails. Yeah, so here, here we're beginning to switch the order. I don't know why it was being so, such a pain before, but now, now the order's switching. Anyway. You've got it like that. Now you can say export as PDF and it's gonna export these all together. Give it a real name though. Um, but that's the, that's the thing that I would do. I would take all of those individual files, bundle them up and ship them back out as a cohesive unit so that you're not handing all these loose files over and then they lose them. Now, the, can they lose the, the bundled PDF? Well, yes, they can, but I, I feel much more. I feel much more like the whole thing's going to stay together if I've got a bundle that I can just hand over rather than hoping that they open all the files. Um, so I would make that tweak, um, and then um, and then otherwise, I really feel like feel like you're in a good spot. Um, obviously, the other thing that you want is the recordings. If you've done your Loom recording, showing them how to, hey, here's how to make a blog post. Here's how to update your Teams page make sure that is in that file as well. And I, I didn't think that I saw it. Um, yeah, I've got your, your logos and illustrations and then your style guide, but I, I didn't see the other. Maybe, maybe that, that's a file that you, you haven't shared um, or that, that's a file maybe you shared previously. That's always possible. Um, over here, we've got Abraham. And Abraham, I feel your pain. Uh, your bosses have asked you to add this qualifications area and it feels very disjointed. Um, one thing I would look at, like if you're looking at the care, add care team member here, everything is left aligned. And then suddenly you begin to come down and this is centered and now I've got these, these, um, these entry points that are not equal and my question here is, can I, can I just come through and create a two column grid out of these, all of these, and then left align this label and maybe give it an underline, maybe draw a line next to it. Like, can I do something to draw attention to that label so that they know that this is a, a thing? Um, also, um, should the, and if this is all optional, should any of it show up until I've entered a title or role? Like this all seems like it's unnecessary if I haven't entered a title or role. Um, am I going, I'm, I'm guessing I will be entering a title or role, but I don't necessarily, oh, that's really weird. A piece of lint flew up on my screen and I thought it was a, I literally thought it was a, somebody's Figma cursor just buzzing around. 
in the file while I was in it, but it was like literally a piece of lint had blown up from my from my computer and was like sticking in there like like it was a little bug or something. Um, anyway, so I left a line first. Can I put it in a grid second? Uh, do I need to show all these fields, or is this something that should show only after I've begun the process of entering a title rule? These are things that I would these are things that I would ask, but but the first two I think are things that you can investigate that would immediately clean this up because I, I agree with you right now it's just kind of it feels like it's all over the place it feels like there's no control here and that's and that's because it's all these different shapes it's diff suddenly a different alignment right in the middle of your file okay all right and ladies and gentlemen that's going to do it for today's edition of the feedback loop that actually was actually relatively fast but Bren's knocking out the CSS exercises Eve is wrapping up her first teacher project and Abraham is slogging through the ongoing project. And many of us have projects like that that we're working on. They, you know, we're working on them, we'll go do something else, we'll come back to that project. It may seem like it may seem like we're making very little progress over the course of weeks and months in, in corporate environments. But what we have to understand and remember is we're always working on other stuff too. So so you know, you you may feel like you're oh yeah, we're not really making any progress. But you weren't really working on that thing steadily all the way through, or maybe you were, and there's just a lot of indecision. Um, one of the, you know, I'll leave you with this note. One one of the things I've discovered, I've been doing a lot of um, a lot of project management um, style consulting as of late, and so often it comes down to so often it comes down to telling your clients, um, hey. I know you want to move forward on this thing, but it is not properly spec'd out yet. We don't have everything we need to move forward. And if you feel like you're kind of stuck and unable to move forward, yet people want to move forward, begin to look at the requirements and ask yourself, have we clearly identified what we want to do here? Because it's very likely that everybody's excited about moving forward, but no one has clearly declared what needs to be done and it takes it takes an adult in the room to go okay i understand we want to do something but we have not put in the work to make our to make the efforts that we put into this fruitful and we need to sit down and and, and dictate here is what we want to do and and once you do that once you do that you'll have a much better chance of success but until you make that declaration um, it's it's going to be an uphill climb. So um, set down, spec out your work, make sure that you've got people on board, and then you'll see these projects moving forward. And beware of people that are, where's my project? Where's my project? Where's my project? Because so often they haven't, they're, they're asking questions, but they haven't actually taken the time to tell you what they really want. All right, without uh, further ado, that's, that's it for Chris, uh, that's it for me. Um, into the feedback loop. I will, I will chat with many of you later today. And for the rest of you. I tell people all the time, if you're looking for a design mentor, then you should definitely work with Chris. You gotta 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 work with Chris. If you're thinking about joining the program or working with Chris, don't hesitate, reach out and sign up.